40,000 patients in the US are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer annually, of which 40,000 eventually succumb to this disease. In other countries, such as the United Kingdom, the survival rate can be as low as 4%, making it one of the most aggressive and most deadly diseases that we know of today. Chemotherapy remains as the primary mode of treatment for pancreatic cancer, given that over 80% of the tumours in pancreatic cancer are incapable of being removed surgically. However, drugs such as gemcitabine and abraxane that are most commonly used clinically in the treatment of pancreatic cancer come with a multitude of problems. For example, gemcitabine, which targets cells that undergo rapid cell division, are unable to differentiate between healthy and tumour cells. Also, the lack of a targeted delivery toward the tumour cells results in a high occurrence of cancer relapse rates. Abraxane, otherwise known as paclitaxel, is a taxane, which belongs to a family of drugs that induces apoptosis in cells by freezing the cell during mitosis and, prevent, and enhancing excessive formation of microtubules to prevent the chromosomes from separating. However, paclitaxel has been shown to be susceptible to multi-drug resistance, whereby cells following the first round of treatment recognize these drugs and overexpress membrane pumps that remove these drugs from the cell before they can act on the tumor cells. To alleviate the problems of inefficient and ineffective drug treatments, we propose the use of DHA SBT1214, a drug conjugate of DHA and SBT1214. SBT1214 is a second generation taxoid, which uh, means that it works in the same way as paclitaxel. However, due to different functional groups on this molecule, it's it has been shown in past literature to be more effective in the treatment of pancreatic cancer than paclitaxel. Furthermore, given the, given the changes in, its structural, uh, in the structure of SBT1214, it is no longer susceptible to the proliferation of multi-drug resistant cancers as the membrane pumps that um, serve to remove the drugs from the cell no longer recognize SBT1214. DHA is a naturally occurring fatty acid which is readily taken up by cancer cells due to its high rate of metabolism um, during the uncontrollable rate of cell division. In this project, we aim to optimize three key aspects of drug treatment, namely the delivery, uptake, and potency of the drug. Given that most drugs in chemotherapy are administered systemically through intravenous injections, it's important that this drug, DHA SBT1214, can be transported safely through the blood and effectively to the tumor cells. We, we developed, uh, we formulated the use, uh, a new drug treatment incorporating the use of nanoemulsions that encapsulate the drug DHA SBT1214. To prepare these nanoemulsions, we first dissolve the drug in fish oil before adding it dropwise to an aqueous solution containing surfactants, which help to stabilize the formation of this nanoemulsion, as well as polyethylene glyco, which increases the affinity of these nanoemulsions to plasma proteins like HSA, thus improving its circulation and allowing it to stay longer in the blood. We then agitated the emulsions using a sonicator to break it down into the nano size, forming this uh, milky white uh, suspension observed. We then used a zeta sizer, transmission electron microscope, and high performance liquid chromatography to characterize the nano emulsions form. Sorry. As seen from this model of a nano emulsion, nano emul the oil and water nano emulsions that we developed comprise of a hydrophilic exterior and a hydrophobic interior. The purpose of this design is to allow us to dissolve highly hydrophobic drugs such as DHA SBT1214 into the nano emulsions to be transported through the bloodstream in a nanoparticle with a hydrophilic exterior. This is a transmission electron micrograph of one of our samples of um, nano emulsions. As you can see, most of the nano emulsions are largely spherical in shape and they have a, a rough diameter of 100 to 150 to 250 nanometers. We further confirmed these results using dynamic light scattering using a zeta sizer. It was shown that most of the nano emulsions had an average diameter in the region of 200 nanometers and an extremely low polydispersity index. So DHA SBT1214 nano emulsions had a PDI of 0.025, indicating that these nano emulsions were well dispersed in the solution and there was a high homogeneity. This can be observed from the, um, from the spread of these uh, peaks. The nano emulsions were also shown to have a highly negative surface charge, which indicates a positive interaction with water molecules in the blood, as well as cell membranes to increase its uptake. The second aspect that we, served, we hoped to optimize was the uptake of the cells, of the nano emulsion into cells. 
This is because the primary mode of action of DHA SBT1214 takes place within the cytoplasm. That is important for us to bring to be able to deliver drugs um, into the into the pancreas tumor cells. This is the images obtained from confocal microscopy. The red fluorescence observed in the first row is the rhodamin dye we encapsulated within the nano emulsions. The blue fluorescence observed in the second row is the cell nuclei stain using DAPI, and the last row is the two images from the, from the two images from the first two rows combined. As observed, there was a continual and gradual increase in the content, intracellular concentration of rhodamine dye within the, nano, within the cells as time passed from half an hour to four hours. This indicated a good uptake of the nano emulsions into the cell over a short period of time, like four hours. The last aspect that we hope to optimize was the potency of these cells, which is the ability of the drug DHA SBT1214 to kill the cells both in vitro and in vivo. For the first uh, set of experiments, we conducted the in, viv in vitro studies on the cytotoxicity of DHA SBT1214 nano emulsions compared to clinically available drugs such as gemcitabine, abraxane, and paclitaxel. As seen from the table here, gemcitabine had the lowest IC50 value in a region of 150 nanomolar which is otherwise known as the minimum concentration of the drug necessary to induce cell death in 50% of the cells. This was lower than that of any DHA SBT1214, the drug DHA SBT1214 in solution form, as well as paclitaxel and abraxane. However, after conducting a t-test, it was shown that um, the IC50 value was not significantly lower than that of any of the other drugs, with the, with the exception of paclitaxel. Expounding on our in vitro studies, we conducted in vivo studies on four not skate mice. To prepare these mice, we injected them with 1 million PANG2 tumor cells subcutaneously before treating them once a week for two weeks with 25 mg per kg of each drug. As seen from the graph and the images below, the nano emulsion, the DHA SBT1214 nano emulsions, were the most effective in reducing the tumor volumes of uh, the mice followed by gemcitabine, abraxane, and an untreated sample. So if you contrast this with the in vitro results we observed earlier, where gemcitabine was the most effective, um, we can observe that the nano emulsions have improved the delivery and efficacy of the drug DHA SBT1214, and that even though it's less potent when administered in vitro, it's more effective in reducing tumor volume in vivo. In conclusion, the nano emulsions we develop have good physical properties, such as its size, shape, of dispersity, as well as good encapsulation efficiency. The nano emulsions were also shown to have good uptake, as seen from how they are readily taken up into the cells over a short period of time. Even though gemcitabine was shown to have a lower IC50 value than DHA SBT1214 nano emulsions when tested in vitro, the nano emulsions were more effective in reducing tumor volumes when tested in vivo. This could be used in the development of drugs that are less toxic, yet more potent and more um, effective in reducing tumor volumes. Current drugs such as gemcitabine, which are unable to differentiate between healthy and tumor cells, often result in many adverse effects, such as hair loss, nausea, and um, vomiting. These can be all reduced by better delivery and better efficacy of the drug used, which would allow us to reduce the concentration of the chemotherapy drugs used to treat the patient. Thereby, we hope to improve the standard of living of patients who are undergoing treatment for pancreatic cancer and possibly improve the, um, the survival rate of these patients. Some future work includes combination therapy, which involves the cross-fertilization of different modes of cancer treatment, such as chemotherapy, um, immunology, and so on. I would like to thank my mentor, um, Professor Amici and Dr. Ahmad, for guiding my research, as well as my tutor, Deborah. Uh, RSI staff and last week TAs for um, helping with my academic work, um, the CE, RSI, MIT, as well as the Ministry of Education Singapore for sponsoring me. Thank you. So the in vivo data show there weren't any error bars on those single mouse experiments for treatment. That's true. So the question was. Um, there was only one, uh, sam the sample size for in vivo experiments was one. So the reason for this is because um, preparing the mice, injecting them with um, PANG2 tumor cells, um, required an incubation time of about two weeks, 
following which we treated them for about two weeks more. So because this was a preliminary experiment, we just um, used four mice just to observe, um, to get preliminary data on whether it was effective in vitro. And definitely one of our future, uh, one of, uh, some of our future will include testing it on um, larger, sample, larger sizes of, larger sample sizes of um, these mice. That the nano emulsions are very effective at getting your, your test dye, the rhodamine, into the pancreatic cells in, in, uh, in culture, I assume. But do they show any selectivity for, pancre for cancer cells, or do they get stuff into any cell equally well? Right. So the question is that in our uptake study, we showed how nano emulsions were taken up into PANK2 tumor cells, which was the cell line that we we're working with. However, um, does this mean that? Uh, these nano emulsions will be taken up into normal healthy cells in the body as well. So one of the reasons why we chose nano emulsions as the carrier for the drug was because um, nano emulsions, due to the polyethylene glyco that we added in its formulation, it's able to bind to plasma proteins in the blood and be transported through the bloodstream. However, the nature of um, blood vessels surrounding um, tumor cells is that they're highly angiogenic, as well as the fact that um, the endothelial lining is often uneven and chaotic, and this allows these nano emulsions to escape from the bloodstream and enter directly into the tumor cells. So while we are not, we would, well, while not use the scientific definition of targeted delivery, there is some form of um, targeting to the tumor cells and um, a better delivery of the drug to the tumor cells. Actual data showing that? Yes, uh, it's actually been documented in past research about the, um, the use of nano emulsions in drug delivery, specifically to cancer tumor cells. Yes. I think of the survivability rates of pancreatic cancer as being very low because of the difficulty of detecting in the first place. How does that relate to your work? Right, so um, the question is, um, the low survival rate of pancreatic cancer can be attributed to um, a difficulties in diagnosis, which results, results in most um, cases being diagnosed at very late stages um, within the cancer. So one of them, um, so although that might not be directly related to um, this field of research, um, what we're mainly focusing on is improving the potency of the drugs to, get, to have better drug treatments than what we have before, with the hope of um, these treatments are actually, uh, these treatments being more effective in treating patients in later stages of cancer as well. How stable is the nano emulsion? Do you have to like prepare it right before you inject it or you can you let it sit for two weeks before you inject it? Okay, so the question is how stable are the nano emulsions um, after we prepare them? So as observed from the polydispersity index, it's actually extremely low at 0 0.025, which in indicates that it's well dispersed and has high um, colloidal stability, which will improve its shell life. Um, furthermore, it's been documented in past research, um, literature that has been published by um, the lab that I'm working in, that these nano emulsions have a shell life stability of uh, more than six months, which has been um, well documented in previous research. Yep. Sorry, just falling right on that. Go to the previous slide of TEM. That looks like a heck of a lot more than 2.5% polydispersity. Why is that so much different? Right. So one of the issues that we um, ran into when conducting TM um, imaging was because nano emulsions um, have to be suspended in an aqueous solution. However, um, it doesn't work too well when you uh, expose it to TM imaging because of the nature of the uh, imaging. And therefore, we had to wash it multiple times and also stain it with um, different dyes, which could have possibly resulted in um, like aggregation and also um, physical changes in the shape of in, in the Nano emulsions. Yeah, yeah um, that was actually one of the things that we considered. However, it wasn't available at the lab. So we had to use the next best alternative where we washed it and then we dried it on copper foil. And that, we, and that is um, one of the reasons why we believe that it might have caused um, partial aggregation of the nano emulsions, as seen here, which was not found in the um, quanti quantitative um, characterization observed from the dynamic light scattering. Uh, so two questions. First, um, how long does the DHA SPT uh, one for persist in the body, and does that change when you put it in the uh, nano emulsion? Right. So uh, I'm not um, exactly sure about the exact um, duration in which it stays in the body. 
However, with the attachment of um, PEG, it has actually been shown to be able to bind to plasma proteins, such as um, human serum albumin, which helps um, tremendously in improving the, site, um, the circulation of these nanoemulsions, such that they're not removed from the blood as easily as, um, say, systemic administration of gemcitabine or pactotex. So, yep. The question is, just for the uh, um, uh, emulsion itself, um, how long does that persist in the body? Is there an accumulation in it or a concern about toxicity if it accumulates in certain tissues? Right, so the question uh, is about how long these nanoemulsions persist in the body and if there's any toxic side effects of the nanoemulsions. Yep, so these nanoemulsions, when encapsulated within the um, nano, these, the drug that we use, DHA SBT1214, when encapsulated within the nanoemulsion, does not have any effect on the cells. So it's able to pass through the bloodstream perfectly normally until it re encounters a tumor site whereby it exits the bloodstream. Uh, one possible um, extension of our research would be to conduct imaging of the life of the mice um, to observe how the distribution of these nanoemulsions after they have been administered. However, um, because uh, one of the constraints we also felt we met that was that the tumor growth was um, increasing too rapidly for samples such as the untreated and the gemcitabin. And therefore, we had to sacrifice the mice before we could conduct such imaging. So um, if we repeat it, that would definitely be one of the um, areas in which we will look out for. Questions from the judges? Um, so did you check in vitro any other cell types other than the pancreas? Did you try like macrophages? Uh, so the question is for the in vitro studies, um, whether other cell types apart from PANG2 cells were investigated. Um, my answer is no, because um, the main cell of interest is PANG2 cells, which is the mouse cell line for pancreatic cancer. And um, the main reason for that is because the main mode of action is within the cells itself, because of the nature of the drug. So um, there isn't much... Uh, the, so the main focus wasn't on um, other cells within um, the organism, such as the phagocytes, but mainly on the tumor cells itself. Just historically, these types of, of emulsions, um, are they taken up readily by macrophages? There's certainly lots of lipid nanoparticles are taken up preferentially by macrophages because that's kind of their job. Right. So um, as shown from um, our in, viv in vivo studies, we believe that the nano emulsions actually help to prevent um, like um, the phagocytosic system from removing um, the drug from the system, as seen from how um, it was able to uh, help in reducing the tumor volumes significantly, tremendously compared to the other samples. And um, I'm not too sure if there's a quantifiable way of measuring that, but that would definitely be um, an interesting area to um, look up, research more about. Yeah. Thank you.